Good afternoon. Um, so we are welcoming you on the webinar, which is entitled English at Work. Um, in this short meeting, we are going to concentrate on two aspects of English at Work. The first one is, you know, purely um, professional and uh, connected with the language which is used um, talking about work. But then we will look very briefly at how to work in um, Anglo-Saxon uh, English language culture, because there are some differences which are not only linguistic, but also cultural. OK, so let's move on. And uh, to warm you up on this rather chilly but very sunny day, I would like to ask you, and if you can, could you please write down in the chat box, um, do you speak English at work? I guess that you do speak English because you participate in this webinar, and I know lots of you, but uh, do, you, do you speak English at work? Okay, we've got a few answers, um, and it means that you use English at work. But can you be so kind and more specific, and can you write just one word um, to tell all of us uh, what, what are the activities that you sometimes, or sometimes on a daily basis, um, have to perform in English? Um, what kind of situation is it that you use English at work? Okay, I, I can see that you're writing something. Um, so, of course, I guess that emails are, are very popular. Yeah, uh, Janek is writing uh, about uh, telephoning, Jacek business meetings, um, explaining processes as well. Right, so there are different language functions uh, which we perform in English at work. Uh, some of them are you know, quite unexpected because they are like social English. So, you know, talking over coffee um, in the morning, and sometimes it, it is a little bit more difficult than talking about professional things, believe me. I've been teaching for 16 years and all of my students keep um, telling me that. Um, yeah, Marta is, uh, is mentioning everyday business communication. Right, um, so um, I guess that some of you attend meetings so please uh, pay attention to the word that uh, to the verb that we use here you attend a meeting yeah or you participate in a meeting or you participate or in trainings okay um, sometimes we go for international conferences or for some kind of seminars to exchange professional knowledge uh, Sofia you can't hear me um, because yes, you, you you should you should hear me, and uh, I think uh, other participants said it's okay. So maybe you can check something on your side. Okay, thank you. If there is a problem, please write write down um, in, in in the chat box. Okay, right. Um, trade fairs are still quite popular. So these are these meetings um, uh, that um, that um, uh, sorry, Katarzyna. Do you hear the sound or it's it is with sound yeah okay so there is something wrong with with Katarzyna um, talking Lydia talking about the HR process explaining um, the people from other branches how it works etc um, okay I'll, I'll write sorry I'll write to um, Zofia and Katarzyna please Oh God, <laughs> I want to do it quickly. And um, Katarzyna, please check your settings. Okay, sorry for that. Um, sometimes we participate in trade fairs. As we said, we go for international conferences and seminars. We participate in trainings, um, professional trainings. We attend meetings. And one more function, which is becoming more and more popular with this, you know, developing um, technology. So um, participation in the so-called calls. Um, as you can see, the word call uh, slightly changing its meaning in English. Now it's like a meeting online and we also uh, participate in calls which is a little bit more difficult because there are um, few few people um, Adam you don't have sound 
Okay. Um, I don't know. What, what about the rest of participants? Can you hear me? Uh, can you hear me? Because most of you can hear me. Um, so, sorry, but uh, those of you... Uh, okay, I write it. I write it down. Please check your uh, settings because you need to allow... Uh, yes, you need to allow me to be heard by you. So you have to do something on your computer. I'm very, very sorry for that. Well, technology, <laughs> that's why participation in calls sometimes can be um, tricky, like uh, for some of us here today. Right. Um, then we um, mentioned a few things connected with performing uh, our duties in English um, at work. And uh, one more question. How long have you been um, at your current job? Um, is, it, is it a relatively new job or you have been working for a few years or like me, I've been working at Worldwide School for, God, over 16 years now. Um, yeah, wow, so some of you have got really long uh, job history, same as me, but there are some uh, people for whom the job is relatively new, like Sylvia, uh, Agnieszka Jacek. Right, uh, so probably our story with our um, jobs is started with job adverts. Uh, sometimes we um, hear some news from our friends or um, there is gossip on the market that some company is going to set up and they're looking for employees. But I would like to show you um, job advertisements uh, which are published in uh, British or American newspapers and they differ from what we can uh, see um, in, in, in Polish media as they mention pretty precisely the, the range of earnings. Um, I, I can't remember any Polish job advertisement with uh, with with the, that that element. Yes, there are a lot of uh, requirements, a little bit about benefits, but never ever um, the range of possible earnings is mentioned. Um, and if you see something like this, uh, usually uh, advertisement uh, for higher positions, um, you see um, this kind of a thing. Okay. Uh, the uh, currency dollars, 100K. And of course, K stands for thousands. So it means it's really um, quite senior uh, management position. Okay. So we've seen something like this. Um, on the newspaper and we decide to apply for this job, um, what happens? Uh, we write a very professional curriculum vita, which uh, is called CV, and even we use exactly this word. Um, yeah, Janek, they don't pay so good here, that's right, <laughs> but maybe one day, maybe one day. Let's not lose our hope. Um, so we prepare our quite um, I would say impressive CV, um, these days usually uh, with a photo included, which reminds me I didn't I didn't switch on the camera mode, but I will say goodbye at the end and you will see me. Um, and of course, one of the things which is um, um, submitted together with CV is uh, a cover letter in which we explain our motivation for taking up this job and we also uh, stress why um, they should consider us as candidates for the position, okay? And now the most stressful part of, um, of the whole process, that is job interview. And the person uh, who applies for the job is the interviewee, the person who answers um, questions, but people who ask questions are interviewers. And of course, you know, we are kind of prepared, but you know, you never know what's going to be asked and they judge you. They keep this eye contact, as you can see here. They try to read between the lines, whether what you're saying is right, correct and true. They judge your body language. So one of the most stressful situations um, in our professional life um, could be a job interview. We've got a, a separate webinar 
uh, which was run by my friend Monika Wesołowska, and you can find uh, the recording of this webinar, uh, how to win a job interview. So if you want to um, explore this subject in details, I strongly uh, recommend, um, you know, watching it at our um, YouTube um, site. Right. Um, during this job interview, we already mentioned money. Um, we discuss and we negotiate our remuneration package. Um, do you know what this word stands for? Remuneration package. I can tell you that this is a hint. Even this. Or even this. Okay, so what can be a remuneration package? That's the word used by um, HR. And uh, I, I guess that you know. Yes, so this is the whole amount of goodies, of things that you get from your future um, employee. Okay, so the first basic thing is a salary. Um, in, in British English, we have another word, um, wage, but wages um, traditionally refer to um, jobs, which are physical jobs, so workers, um, hairdressers, um, I don't know, waitresses, um, and usually wages were paid weekly, okay? Um, if we're lucky enough, and our employer is a good one, uh, we can get a bonus, which can be given to us on monthly, sometimes quarterly, or uh, most frequently, annual basis. Okay? Uh, apart from that, a uh, remuneration package may include extra benefits, uh, such as social insurance, uh, medical care, um, some, some kind of uh, different things and facilities that employer um, either offers or covers part of the expenses. Uh, sometimes they are called incentives. Incentives are like extra benefits, but this word is used mainly for um, uh, middle, senior and top uh, management. So all extra things which are not really uh, money, although they cost, as we know. All right, so we negotiated our uh, remuneration pack. Uh, we performed well at the job interview. We got the job. So we've got something like a promotion period, a uh, honeymoon. We are very happy. Uh, but uh, of course, different things come up. And um, depending on what type of uh, work we do, we can be more or less happy. Um, in English, we have a part-time job, so you work only a few hours a day, a week, depending on your arrangement. A full-time job is usually what we call nine to five, because um, in, in Anglo-Saxon reality, they very, very seldom work from eight to four. It, it would be rather nine to five, full-time job. Um, but it can be flexi time, so you can start you know, within few hours, say, 8 to 10, and then finish respectively 4 to 6. Or you have fixed time, so there is no choice. You, you have to be um, on, on a specific time. And of course, you got a, a type of a work of a freelancer where you decide um, when you work and for how long. OK? Um, so what, what, what type of, uh, of, of, of job <coughs> Sorry, do you have? How many hours uh, do you work daily? Viola is writing eight. Sylvia, flexible. Agnieszka, eight. <coughs> Sorry. Marta, full time. <coughs> Jacek, you've got some, some overtime. <coughs> will you excuse me? I will have a sip of water, OK? Sorry, I had to go to the kitchen and, and have a glass of water. Right, so most of us work, I think, eight up to 10 hours. But if we work more, of course, it, uh, it is called overtime. 
sometimes paid, sometimes unfortunately unpaid. All right, so the job and part of job, part of work is morning coffee. Probably um, the most important part of uh, our existence um, at work because this is the, the time and, and this is the place, depending uh, where you work, when you learn the most important news, rumors and gossips about company, uh, company life and about people in organization. It's very important to be updated. And after morning coffee, the rat race begins. Um, that's the uh, kind of eating which exists also in Polish, which explains this uh, quick pace of life, um, quick run to reach targets, uh, to achieve goals, which are set up either by our um, supervisors, superiors, or the organization. Um, or to meet deadlines, either external deadlines or um, our internal deadlines that we set up for ourselves. Um, I think there is nothing wrong with this, uh, because if we reach, if we achieve, if we are on time with our duties or plans, um, that works with me. Um, that creates my, my sense of achievement. Of course, sometimes deadlines are very tight and I'm nervous and, and we are nervous um, at our organization, but that gives us some kind of, you know, pace and the feeling that we are moving, moving on. But as we know, uh, work is not all. Apart from work, there is life. And um, this um, experience, work-life balance, is relatively new, although quite simple from the language point of view, because people realized, and that's, you know, like coming back to my question, how, how, how much time do you work, that work cannot fulfill all of our time, right? That there is a strong need for life, for things that make us um, relaxed, or which um, make us um, having some kind of distance to professional issues. Um, how you um, do it? What is your idea about uh, keeping this work-life balance? Uh, I, for example, I learn other language. I learn Spanish. I do some sport. I try to travel with my friends. Um, well, what are your ways to be balanced between this rat race of work and um, just normality. What, what do you do in your free time? How do you relax? Okay, there are some answers coming up. We are waiting, we are waiting. So what can we do? What can we do to be more happy and not so stressed? Well, Janek, very good idea. Beer meetings, yes, so we can uh, meet with friends over beer. Uh, Yola is um, um, keeping work-life balance by spending time with her little daughter, which is very nice because children make us feel completely different from our uh, professional environment. That's true. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Jacek is working uh, 24 hours a day almost. Um, Eva is, yes, using the, the, the beauties of nature. She's walking, cooking. Yes, Elżbieta, cooking is, is, is great. I think that you concentrate on something so completely different especially at this time of the year that cooking is great and reading yes because books take us to a completely different reality right so we've got our beloved job uh, we're doing what we have to um, but from time to time we need to be evaluated by our um, usually direct bosses and there is uh, time for um, job appraisal uh, job appraisal, so the time for um, evaluation of our performance and depending on the result, uh, we can be either promoted um, and uh, here we have two expressions which uh, function um, simultaneously um, in English. There's career path or a career ladder. Um, the only difference is that we use a different uh, verb so we can follow. I tried to write it, but I don't know if I do it correctly. 
follow our career path or go, right? Go. This is G, as if you didn't know, right? And um, what do we do with the career, career ladder? We climb. So we climb. Yes. So we climb the career ladder. And as uh, with all trends, we can use words like quickly, steadily, slowly, etc. Okay. Um, promotion is uh, sometimes connected with money, so we get either a bonus, uh, sometimes bonuses are related to our performance, or we can get something more stable like a pay raise. Um, if things are not going well, um, the dismissal appears, and um, the letter of dismissal or oral dismissal is a sign that we have to write our CV again and look for another job advert. Um, expressions for this unpleasant situation, people can uh, get fired, uh, people can be laid off, uh, also can be made redundant, this is more official and um, functions in HR language. Or if we talk about higher positions like the president of the company or vice president, um, they can be dismissed. Uh, this expression also applies to politicians. Um, people who are dismissed um, very often receive very generous compensation, money compensation, which in English is called golden parachute. So enough money to land safely. Nice, nice thing. Right. Um, so um, if we talk about work generally, uh, we and using English at work, it's advised to um, use KISS principle, like during presentations. So if we use the foreign language, in this case English, we should try to keep it short and simple, both in oral communication and in written communication. Why? Because if we follow this KISS principle, um, there's the risk of making mistakes. Uh, there is this is much lower and there is less chance to um, make some kind of mistake which can cost us, I don't know, reputation or even money if we think about interests of the company. So I say yes, uh, speak and uh, write in a simple way, but what about idioms? Some of you who sometimes visit uh, my webinars know that I like idioms and I think that they are um, necessary uh, element of um, our language competence. So here just a few of them to illustrate uh, work-wise situation. Um, if we say that we get something off the ground, uh, as the picture indicates, means that we start something, yes? Uh, usually the project, initiative, idea, mm, as the example um, says, after a lot of hard work, we finally got the campaign off the ground. Mm -hmm. If you manage to do so, uh, probably your, your company um, uh, or your department or your office looks like a, a beehive, uh, so the place where bees live. Uh, when I went to offer help, the office was already a hive of activity. We have a very similar idiom in Polish, as you probably remember. If things are in the company, in the organization, uh, in they are in the pipeline, it means that they are processed the moment, right? Um, here the example tells us that a new version of the budget is in the pipeline at the moment. So it means it's in the decision process. Of course, the uh, bigger organization, the longer <laughs> pipeline is. Mm -hmm. And sometimes um, we suffer, um, not only in administration, but in our business life, we suffer from red tape. And uh, red tape is a synonym of bureaucracy and hierarchy, which slows down the process of uh, making decision. And as we know, uh, in the modern world, time is money. So if there wasn't so much red tape, the company would be up and running already. Okay, uh, I'm sure that all of us know the word brainstorming because it's used even if we speak Polish, but there is a new one, um, blamestorming. If you blame somebody, you try to find who was guilty and uh, due to whose fault 
something wrong happened. Um, blame storming is usually a kind of um, session or some kind of uh, summing up why the um, event or um, plan or the project or initiative went wrong. Unfortunately, I think that after um, the Olympic Games, which uh, now take part um, in, in, in South Korea, we will have a lot of blame storming. Blame storming session took place following the drop in sales. Sometimes a blame storming session um, is not uh, a negative one. We are trying to find um, mistakes and try to avoid them and find ways in the future to make things better. Well, some of us, I think, honestly, from time to time may have some uh, thoughts that they do donkey but work, sorry. Um, so if you say, I do the donkey work, uh, my boss gets the credit, it means that you do this, you know, dull, hard and, and difficult part of the job and somebody else, it could be your colleague um, or counterpart from, from, from the other company who cooperates with you. So donkey work is usually hard, unrecognized work, uh, which you are really not rewarded for. Right, and um, we look at the language, but as I said, we also look um, at the cultural aspect of using English at work, because now we know that English is kind of modern lingua franca, so international language in which we uh, do business. Uh, ages ago, it was, it was Latin, um, there was a long period of domination of French language in Europe, and now definitely uh, English is the number one, although um, Spanish and Chinese are, you know, stepping just behind. And what we do, as you told me at the very beginning of our meeting, we work in multicultural global companies, international companies, um, and we deal with cross-cultural aspects of using the language. So it's not only the words that we use at work, but also the way um, of behavior. Um, if we look at the communication aspect um, of, of such existence in, in the international surrounding, uh, we start with things like even greetings, yeah? Um, so we um, say hi, hello, we exchange very short and sharp hand, handshakes, yes? In Polish we tend to keep somebody's hand for a little bit longer just to express our, I don't know, um, joy or, um, you know, we do it, yeah? Um, in Anglo-Saxon cultures they do it very shortly and very briefly. We don't give hugs, we don't give kisses like French people or Spanish people, it's short and very concise. Um, we don't use words like dear, love and darling. Uh, we try to be, you know, a bit reserved, but we should smile. Um, sometimes for us Poles who are regarded to be a little bit um, gloomy, um, it's not so obvious, but smile is very, very um, important, a powerful um, element of um, Anglo-Saxon business culture, which uh, also constitutes this extra verbal communication work. The same applies to body language, so you should maintain eye contact. For example, Asian people won't look uh, directly into your eyes. For them, this is the sign of aggression. Um, in, in our Western culture, um, uh, you know, you, you try to keep and maintain eye contact, but you should keep this distance. Um, you shouldn't come too close and um, become too familiar with your business partner. Uh, and uh, I said before, the handshake should be firm, short, and not exaggerated. Um, in Poland, it takes some time to uh, come to the first names, yes. Uh, there is a period that we call each other Mr. Kowalski, sometimes for quite a long time. Um, in German companies, you keep calling people like that for ages. Um, they, they have this peculiar custom of, of not using first names. Maybe now it's changing a bit, but definitely uh, Brits and Americans, they very quickly, uh, almost immediately, um, tell you, please call me John. Yeah? Okay. Um, 
also, if we use English at work, if we use English at um, at, 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 uh, at work and in professional situations, we have to know uh, not only how to say something, but what to say. And w what do you think are safe topics for conversation? Imagine yourself uh, at your company with some visitors from abroad or maybe your co-workers with whom you communicate in English. Well, what are the, the topics that you can discuss <coughs> safely? Yes, Eva is right. Weather. Mm -hmm. uh, what else? What is allowed? Uh, what won't put us in embarrassing situation or somebody else in embarrassing situation? Okay, I'm waiting just 30 seconds more. If not, we are moving on. All right. Um, so definitely you can talk about entertainment. What we mean here is uh, film, uh, music, um, some kind of a concert. Yeah, that's that's pretty. Yes, music, exactly, sport. Oh. Yes, so you talk about holidays, uh, either holidays that um, already happened or the holidays that you're planning. That's really, really a safe subject. Weather, yes, something that Eva mentioned. Uh, you're either commenting what's going on today or what happened yesterday or you're talking about uh, weather forecasts, very safe uh, ground. Well, um, so far, family seemed to be safe, but we know that these days um, family is not as stable as it used to be. And for some people, it could be a little bit embarrassing in terms of their partners or maybe divorces or having not having children. I put family, but once I was, I was preparing this slide, I thought, Maybe these days we should avoid asking people um, about their family status um, because not for everyone it's a um, safe and comfortable subject. Yeah, Ma Marek is, is writing about uh, the Olympic Games. So, uh, news, yes, uh, news and uh, work and sports. <laughs> so, um, news and sports come under this, um, what, what Marek wrote in, in the chat box. Uh, we are commenting what's going on and, 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 and sport is always um, a safe ground, provided that you don't go into details about, for example, football clubs. Uh, so, if you're from Krakow and you're a big fan of Wisła, uh, if you start discussing this with fans of Legia from Warsaw, maybe the, the the discussion won't go along the way as you as you wish to. But of course, it's it's a joke. Um, so um, we we can uh, speak um, with our counterparts uh, in English about safe topics and make these small um, small talks. But on the other side of the equation, we've got taboos. And um, taboo subjects are really um, important um, in the sense that you can ruin your um, business or work relationship with somebody if you start talking about something which is really uncomfortable or really socially um, unacceptable. Um, I think that, yes, Eva is right. Uh, Eva probably uh, saw already my slide, politics. Um, politics is a very, very dangerous ground, um, either here in Poland or um, if we talk about global um, politics. So it's better to um, avoid uh, this, this subject. Um, religion as well, um, both subjects evoke a lot of emotions and could be, you know, the subject of um, unnecessary um, discussion. Um, sex, sex preferences, um, finance. Um, I, I, I told you at the beginning that they uh, speak quite openly about the range of earnings uh, when they hire for the job. But um, once you get your remuneration package established, you know, it becomes pretty confidential. Yes. And origin. Um, now the world is like you know one big melting pot. Um, we we don't ask people who, for example, look differently than us. Yes. Oh, where do you come from? Are you from Africa? Well, for us Poles, it's quite neutral. But I think that in this reserved and cold Anglo-Saxon culture, 
um, this this kind of behavior could be treated uh, as offensive and not polite. Okay, um, and now a few comments um, about um, British and American customs um, in this professional professional world. So uh, punctuality. This is this is a Protestant uh, culture. So although they may be not believers, uh, but they 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 keep this lifestyle of Protestants. They are down to earth. They are always on time. Um, if you are late, there is nothing like academic quarter in Poland. If you are going to be late. You are expected to call a few minutes, um, a few minutes before that that you would be late. Um, there must be an agenda of the meeting. They feel very uneasy if there is no agenda. Yes. Uh, so, so the meetings, even if they are spontaneous, they need to have some kind of clue. Um, there is always um, small talk um, required um, as the kind of introductory phase uh, of um, of the whole um, uh, of the whole meeting um, you concentrate on the facts and figures not emotions uh, already we mentioned this eye contact and keeping personal space so never never coming too close um, and a good good custom which I like personally very much is summarizing so after the meeting you come back to your offices and you write a short email uh, to confirm what has been discussed and what is possibly agreed for future actions. Okay. Um, business dress, well, of course it differs. Business dress or dress code or business dress code um, differs depending um, in, in, in what in what business um, you work at the moment. And also within one organization, you have different departments. If you're a frontline department, definitely it would be as here more conservative and colors are dark and um, and and women um, shouldn't wear too much makeup and too much jewelry and dresses shouldn't be too short so um, that's the general code and from that of course we have exceptions but strongly connected with the place um, where, where you work and with your role in the organization okay um, business cards still exchanged, um, although not with such dignity like uh, Japanese people do it. They just, you know, Japanese tend to read business card for almost five minutes. <laughs> I'm joking, but um, you just take a look. Yeah, it's a quick glance, and um, you 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 put it down. But still, still they are used. Although now we've got these. Um, uh, virtual business cards, and I think that they will substitute the real ones, the paper ones, soon. Um, business gifts uh, given usually on special occasions like Christmas, um, so some accessories. You can give a book um, about the history of your country or some um, tourist uh, attractions, and of course, you can go for lunch. It's also treated as a kind of business gift. Um, when we work in the international environment, um, a good thing to mention is a mobile etiquette. Um, so whether we speak Polish or English, um, there is some kind of a set rules. Uh, and definitely uh, in Anglo-Saxon business culture, you're expected to um, have your phone switched off uh, during not only meetings, but also meal times. Um, it, it is generally considered to be um, impolite um, if, if, if you keep uh, your mobile on the table, for example, over the um, lunch, uh, business lunch. Yes. Out of sight, of, out of mind, just put your phone uh, into your pocket, handbag, and enjoy the moment, whether this is um, professional or um, just, you know, private meeting of. Uh, colleagues from work. Uh, try to avoid uh, some some funny um, funny for us uh, ring tones. Uh, here I put the spacito because uh, the spacito because um, the, 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 there are you know now uh, a lot of signals like that. Um, uh, try to make this ring tone be more neutral. Yes. Okay, and always call back because that's the way it is. Um, expected. All right. Okay. Um, so that was a very brief um, 
overview of a few things that are connected with using English at work because as I told you at the very beginning, it's not only the matter of language and, and words that you use, but also a set of behaviors which sometimes speak louder than words. And um, we should be aware of these cross-cultural differences, of this um, multinational environment that we're um, existing in. Um, it's a very broad subject, English at work, because we can talk about different things. We could cover presentations, negotiations, meetings, telephonics, but that would need not one meeting, but probably um, even 10. So that was a brief overview here uh, during our uh, session today. But I promise to send really substantial uh, materials um, at the beginning of next week, um, in which you will find uh, much more language input. So more idioms, more expressions, connected with recruitment, with uh, performance, uh, with transition between positions. So you will receive quite a lot. I, I wouldn't call it HR language, but connected with functioning as the system and some useful phrases for, <clears throat> for um, performing uh, your tasks on everyday daily basis. So enjoy your work every day. And I hope you, you like this, this brief meeting and uh, this brief moment with English. Please expect materials to come to your mailbox pretty soon. And if you have any questions, now we've got a few minutes uh, for this and you can write them in the, in the chat box. Okay? I'm switching on the camera. Can you see me? Okay. <laughs> it was a great pleasure to have all of you here and I hope you enjoy our webinars and um, they give you some incentive and they give you some um, encouragement to look at English not only as a, you know, something that you have to learn um, using lots of uh, rules and, 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 and words to learn by heart, but to see English as a beautiful, beautiful medium of communication, uh, which is, you know, used by so many people all over the world. I can see something. Uh, uh, Marek, when can we expect next webinar? Marek, we run our webinars um, on a monthly basis. Uh, so today is 22nd, uh, so I think uh, the last or one before the last uh, Thursday on uh, March, in March. Okay, <laughs> uh, last one, okay. Um, again, if you have any kind of questions uh, concerning the subject or the materials that you will receive, please do not hesitate to contact either me or um, Tomek or generally worldwide school, uh, our fantastic employer. <laughs> Thank you very much and see you next time.